Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our physiology playlist. This is the fourth video in autonomic nervous system physiology. In the previous video, we compared between somatic and autonomic. Today, we'll talk about ganglia. A relay station for regulation. It's also a distribution center. As you know, the neuron is the structural unit of the nervous system. The neuron has a soma and an axon. A collection of somas in the central nervous system is a nucleus. A collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system is a ganglion. Where is the dorsal root ganglion? Peripheral nervous system. Where is the sphenopalatine ganglion? Peripheral nervous system. Ciliary ganglion. Peripheral nervous system. Otic ganglion. Peripheral nervous system. Terminal ganglia. Peripheral nervous system. Sympathetic chain ganglia. Peripheral nervous system. Get it? Okay. Axons. A collection of axons in the central nervous system is called a tract, such as spinothalamic tract, corticospinal tract, etc. A collection of axons in the peripheral nervous system is a nerve. So instead of telling people, you're getting on my nerve, tell them, you're getting on my axons in the peripheral nervous system. You will lose all of your friends. And of course, you know that some neurons are myelinated, others are not myelinated. However, all of them have beautiful neurolimbal sheaths. Axons, myelinated or unmyelinated, myelinated A fibers and B fibers. What's the difference? A are thick, B fibers are thin. C fibers are the worst. They are unmyelinated and they are thin. And this, of course, is conveyed in the velocity of nerve transmission. A, thick and myelinated, 100 meters per second, the fastest. B, thin, only 10. C, thin and unmyelinated, this is just 1 meters per second. Here's your lovely spinal cord. Draw that beautiful line in the sand. Anything behind it, sensory, anything in front of it is motor. Each spinal cord segment has three horns of the gray matter, posterior horn, lateral horn, anterior horn, three columns of the white matter, posterior column, spinothalamic tract, and corticospinal tract. We have two roots or rami, ventral and dorsal. We have an anterior median fissure and a posterior median sulcus. What is this? A dorsal root ganglion. What's the definition of a ganglion? A collection of somas outside the CNS. In other words, a collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system. Is this peripheral? Yeah, because it's outside the spinal cord. Spinal cord is central. Anything outside of it is peripheral. So this posterior ramus is of course sensory because it's behind the line. How about these? Oh, somatic motor and autonomic motor. They are motor because they are in front of the line. Oh, and by the way, all of the autonomic fibers are motor. Autonomic is never sensory. So both of these fibers are motor. Look at them and respect them. There is a huge difference between them. Somatic will not relay in a ganglia. It will go straight to your biceps or your triceps or your quadriceps muscle. However, autonomic fibers, they will relay in a ganglion. And anything before the ganglia is known as preganglionic. The rest of the fibers after the ganglia are known as postganglionic fibers. Why is this? Why did the somatic not relay in a ganglia? And why did the autonomic relay in ganglia? Imagine that you are a neurosurgeon in California and you want to travel to New York to save some kid's life. Do you want to relay in layover in Denver, Colorado. Oh no, I don't have time. I have to go in a direct flight with no layover, with no relay in Denver. However, if you're just having fun, you can go to Denver and this is a layover or a ganglia and then you can reach New York. Of course, this takes much time, but it gives you lots of options after Denver. So the neurosurgeon took a private jet from California to New York. The motor fibers are the private jets of your nervous system. We do not have time to waste in a ganglia. However, autonomic fibers, yeah, we can wait. We have preganglionic before the ganglia and postganglionic fibers after the ganglia. Therefore, Denver, I mean, the ganglia is a relay station for regulation. It's a distribution center. Amazon does the same thing. Amazon headquarters are here in Seattle, but it has distribution centers all over the country. Why is this? They are relay stations for regulation. This is cool. However, it's not the fastest way. The fastest way is just a private jet. And when you're running from a tiger, you're running for your life. You do not have time to relay in a stupid ganglia. You're gonna go straight from your primary motor cortex 
in the brain and then you reach the anterior horn cell in the spinal cord directly to the biceps and quadriceps you do not have time however when the freaking vagus no pun intended wants to increase the secretion and motility of your stomach ah we can wait it's not the end of the world that's why we relay in a ganglia yes it's gonna take some time but also we can supply the fundus of the stomach the body of the stomach the duodenum the jejunum etc and this is the answer to question number seven somatic fibers do not rely in ganglia but autonomic do now you know why somatic gotta be real fast however autonomic we can wait by the same token you also get the answer to question number six somatic fibers have the best fibers ever because we are running from a tiger however autonomic yeah we can sacrifice give me b and c since a fibers are the best why don't make all of our nerve fibers a fibers we cannot not in a world of scarce resources which have alternative uses myelin is amazing but it's pretty expensive it has lots of fat lots of protein the fat and protein that you can use to make myelin you can also use to make the beloved cell membrane of your cell it's all about priorities and economizing the scarce resources otherwise the average person will be as obese as a sumo wrestler and you will eat seven or eight meals a day just to survive and you will spend the rest of the day in the bathroom the answer to question number one was discussed in the previous video we have more somatic fibers than autonomic because we need some fine movements in our extremities but who cares about increasing gastric acid secretion it's a crude process that requires no sophistication whatsoever but man thumb opposition finger flexion and extension that's huge that's specialized that requires lots of fibers comparison between somatic and autonomic somatic everything is one autonomic everything is two somatic one type just somatic autonomic two sympathetic and parasympathetic somatic has one target skeletal muscles only autonomic two targets muscles and glands even then muscles have two subtypes and glands are two subtypes muscles we supply cardiac and smooth glands endocrine exocrine somatic has one function to contract the stinking muscle autonomic two functions i can increase your heart rate i can decrease your heart rate i can increase your gastric acid secretion i can decrease your gastric acid secretion i can increase your bowel motility i can decrease your bowel motility somatic has one type of fiber a fiber usually a alpha autonomic have two fibers b and C. Somatic has one afferent. There is no time to waste. Relaying in a ganglion. Autonomic. Oh, yeah, we can wait. We have preganglionic, a ganglion, and then postganglionic. Why ganglia? It's a relay station for regulation. It's a distribution center. So that one preganglionic, vagus, can supply the fundus of the stomach, the body of the stomach, the antrum of the stomach, and the duodenum. But for your hands, no, you do not need this. You need a fiber for every single sophisticated movement. You do not need distribution like this. You just one fiber coming down from the spinal cord as is. Somatic has one neurotransmitter, acetylcholine. Autonomic, two neurotransmitter. If I am parasympathetic postganglionic fiber, I'll secrete acetylcholine. If I am asympathetic postganglionic, I'll secrete norepinephrine. With the tiny exception of sweat glands, they are postganglionic sympathetic but they secrete acetylcholine. We'll discuss that later. Somatic fibers, voluntary, autonomic, involuntary. Somatic is an operator, just contract the muscle. Autonomic, coordinator, do you want to increase your heart rate? Decrease your heart rate? I'll coordinate this for you. Somatic starts at the anterior horn cell, autonomic starts at the lateral horn cells. Why? Because the somatic has to be faster. Please refer to the last video. Somatic fibers, faster, therefore give them the best fibers ever. A, alpha fibers, they are thick and myelinated and rich. Autonomic fibers, I'm sorry, we have wasted most of our resources here because we need to survive, but who cares about gastric acid secretion? Take some B and C, folks. Economics is the scientific study of scarce resources which have alternative uses. Let's talk about this for a second. You see this red fiber? Yes, this is somatic motor. How do you know it's motor? Look at this, it came from the ventral horn. Oh yeah, it is motor. This motor fiber, oh, it's very important for survival. <gasps> Do you need to relay in ganglia? Shut up, I don't have time. I'll continue as is. I will not waste my time in this stupid ganglia. 
How about autonomic fibers? They are motor. How did you know? They came from the ventral horn. Oh yeah, they originated in the lateral horn cells, by the way. But the somatic motor fibers originated from the anterior horn cells because we do not have time. Tell me about the autonomic fibers. Oh yeah, we can wait in a ganglia so that just one preganglionic vagus, this one, can give you like about 10 postganglionic fibers. These postganglionic fibers are of course thinner and they have C type because we have wasted most of our resources here in the preganglionic by giving them B type. This is just one fiber, but this is 10. If you want to spend money, spend it here. This is money well spent. But if you want to spend money here, this is a little too much. You will spend all of your day eating. Myelin is expensive. Okay, where is the cell body of the preganglionic fiber? Oh, follow it, baby. It's going to be in the lateral horn cell inside the central nervous system. Cool. Where is the postganglionic cell body? It's in the ganglia. Oh, so this was the start of one fiber in the lateral horn cell, like this. The end of the same fiber was in the ganglia. And now we started another fiber called the postganglionic like this. Not just one, but actually many. Okay, so the cell body of the postganglionic fiber is in the ganglia peripherally, not in the central nervous system. Preganglionic fibers, they actually secrete acetylcholine, but postganglionic fibers, it depends. If it's parasympathetic, it will secrete acetylcholine. If it's sympathetic, it will secrete norepinephrine, with a tiny exception of sweat glands. The postganglionic sympathetic fibers going to the sweat gland are going to secrete acetylcholine. What is the function of the ganglion? It's a distribution center like Amazon. It's a relay station for regulation. If you can understand and master the slide, you will cruise through the rest of physiology and pharmacology like a sharp knife through warm butter. So please bring a piece of paper and try to draw all of this from scratch. And I'm preparing a pharmacology video to be available on my website in a few days. Please click that bell next to the subscribe button and there is lots of free stuff coming. Functional unit reflex arc. This is important for survival. I touched the stove. The stove was so hot. Quickly give me a motor fiber to contract my biceps to release my hand away from the stove. Do you think what type of fibers should be in the efferent? A, B, or C? This is important for survival. This has to be very fast, otherwise I will burn. Therefore, give me your A fibers. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. What is the definition of a ganglia? A ganglia is a collection of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. Look at this dorsal root ganglia. Function? Sensory. Somatic. Oh, ganglia. It's in the peripheral. Yes, this is away from the central nervous system. Cool. Autonomic ganglia. We'll talk about them later. Again, they are in the peripheral nervous system. This is the sympathetic chain for sympathetic nervous system. This is the collateral ganglia or the prevertebral ganglia for the sympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system has what we call terminal ganglia. All of these ganglia are in the peripheral nervous system. So the moral of the story is ganglion is in the peripheral nervous system with only one exception. There is one type of ganglia that's in the central nervous system. Do you know it? If you know the answer to this question, you're a freaking genius. Let me know the answer in the comment section. Now pay attention. In your body there is no like a green circle like this that's the actual ganglia. The ganglia as a separate structure does not really exist. The ganglia is just the axon of one fiber, this is the preganglionic, coming in close proximity to the dendrites of other fibers. This is what we call a ganglia. This is the ganglia, but it doesn't really exist as a separate structure. There's no like circle in your body for the ganglia. No, just some fibers came in close proximity to each other. If you're struggling to understand cardiac pharmacology, I have a course for you, medicosisperfectionist.com. You can download it today. I also have an autonomic pharmacology course coming very soon. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Hit that bell because there are free gifts coming very very soon when we reach 300,000 subscribers together and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses right now. Thank you for watching as always. Be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.